We're going to learn how to prepare our images in Photoshop for a transfer portfolio. I've already launched the Photoshop program, and now I'm going to go up to File and choose Open. My image is on the desktop. Here it is. So I'll choose it and open it. The very first thing I'm going to do in Photoshop is go to the Layers palette and double click on my background layer to turn it into a normal layer. I'm going to rename this Image and click OK. Now, so I don't forget, before I do anything else, I'm going to go right up to the File menu and choose Save As. I want to name my file so that it corresponds to the list of works in my portfolio. I'm using Arabis underscore one as the name of this file. I'm going to make sure that it is a JPEG file, so I'm going to choose JPEG from the format menu. And make sure that it's on the desktop so it's easy for me to find. Now I'll save it. When you're asked to maximize a JPEG, you can choose the default quality. Say OK. Now I'm going to resize the image so that it's the proper size for the portfolio. Let's go up to Image and choose Image Size. The first thing to do is to uncheck the resample image box and then change your image resolution to 300. Click OK. Now we're going to go back to image and choose image size once again. This time we're going to click the resample image box. Now we're going to go back to image, image size check the resample image box. Make sure that constraint proportions is also checked. Now we're going to go up to the portion of the box that says pixels. Look for the largest dimension. In my case that's 3072. Highlight the largest dimension and change it to 600. Then click OK. Your image will now be the proper size for your portfolio. You can change the view, by the way, if you prefer, by going up to the menu and choosing View and Fit on Screen, for example. Now let's do a simple contrast adjustment. Go over to the Layers palette and at the bottom find a circle that has a black and a white half. Click on the circle and choose Curves from the Flyout menu. Here's the curves adjustment. We're going to make a very simple correction. We're going to make sure that the black eyedropper and the white eyedropper are properly set and use them to correct the image. Double click on the black eyedropper. If it's properly set for our purposes, it'll say 0, 0, 0 in these R, G, and B boxes. Say OK. Now that the black eyedropper is properly set, I'm going to find an area in my image that I'd like to make the darkest point and give it a single click with the black eyedropper. Now let's set up the white eyedropper. Double click and make sure that 255, 255, and 255 are the numbers in the R, G, and B boxes. Say OK. Now find an area that you think is the brightest part of the image and make a single click. You've now adjusted the contrast. If your image has a color cast, you don't think the color looks natural, you can also use the gray eyedropper and click on an area in your image that you think should be gray. See if this improves the color. If you don't like the way that this looks, go up to edit and choose step backward or undo. So we've saved our image, we've made it the proper size, and we've adjusted the contrast. The one other task you might want to think about is a crop. 
This is the cropping tool over here in the toolbox. Click and drag around the area that you would like to be your image area. Once a cropping box is created, you can move the box by clicking and dragging. You also can pull on the handles to change the size of the image and its proportions. If your image was scanned or photographed and it's crooked, you can place your cursor above and outside of any corner or below and outside of any corner. It will turn into a double curly arrow. Adjust the cropping box so that it matches the edges of your picture. When you apply the crop, your picture will be straightened. To apply the crop, hit the Enter key. If you don't like the crop, you can hit the Escape key. Now that I've finished working on my image, I have two tasks left. Let's first go over to the Layers palette. We're going to choose the Flyout menu for the Layers palette, a small downward arrow at the top right hand corner, and flatten the image. Our final task is to do another save. Let's go to the file menu and choose Save As. Once again, let's make sure that we have the proper name. In my case, Arabis underscore one. That our format is JPEG and that we have saved it on the desktop. You'll be prompted to replace the original file, and you can do that.